CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 4.3, Given a Scenario, Implement Workstation Backup and Recovery Methods. Imagine the nightmare of losing all your critical data in the blink of an eye. From cherished photos to vital business files, the mere thought of it can make anyone feel uneasy. That is where backups come in and provide you a little digital insurance. But not all backups work the same way, and choosing the right one depends on your needs. Let's break down the four main types of backups, which are full, differential, incremental, and synthetic, in a way that's simple to understand. A full backup is exactly what it sounds like, it creates a complete copy of everything on your system. Imagine it as taking a snapshot of your entire digital world, including files, applications, and settings. This snapshot becomes the foundation for all other backups. Here's why it's important. If something goes wrong and you need to restore your data, a full backup has everything in one place, ready to go. You don't need to search for pieces or combine data from different backups. It's fast and simple when it comes to recovery. However, creating a full backup takes time and requires a lot of storage space because you're copying everything. For this reason, full backups are usually done less frequently and are often paired with other, more efficient backup types to save time and storage space. After you've created a full backup, you have the option to let differential backups take over in order to save time and storage space. Unlike a full backup, which copies everything, a differential backup only records the changes made since the last full backup. If you've added new files or updated existing ones, the differential backup captures those changes. The first difference you will encounter is when you go to restore your data. If you have elected to use differential backups, you will now need two things, the last full backup and the most recent differential backup. While this process is straightforward, it's not as simple as restoring from a full backup alone. Remember, a full backup contains everything in one place, making restoration a single-step process. With a differential backup, you must retrieve and combine data from two sources, adding a bit of complexity to the recovery process. The trade-off for this added recovery step is efficiency during backup creation. Differential backups avoid copying unchanged data, focusing only on new or modified files. However, as time passes, differential backups can grow larger because they continuously accumulate all changes since the last full backup. For example, a differential backup made 5 days after a full backup includes changes from days 1 through 5, making it larger than a differential backup taken after a single day. For these reasons, differential backups are an excellent choice when frequent full backups aren't practical, but simplicity in recovery remains important. While not as fast to restore as a full backup, they strike a balance between storage efficiency and ease of recovery, offering a middle ground between full backups and our next type, incremental backups. If differential backups are known for striking a balance, incremental backups push efficiency even further. Like the differential backup type, incremental backups start with a full backup. However, instead of tracking all changes since the last full backup, incremental backups only record the changes made since the last backup of any type, whether it was full, differential, or incremental. Imagine a daily backup routine, on Sunday, you perform a full backup. On Monday, an incremental backup saves only the changes made since Sunday. On Tuesday, it saves only the changes made since Monday, and so on. Each incremental backup is smaller and quicker to create because it only captures the most recent changes, making it highly efficient in terms of storage and time. The downside? Restoring from incremental backups is more complex. To recover your data, you'll need the full backup as well as every incremental backup made since. Think of it like assembling a puzzle, where every piece must fit together perfectly to recreate your data. This complexity makes incremental backups better suited for systems where changes occur frequently, storage efficiency is critical, and recovery speed is less of a priority. Incremental backups shine when you want to minimize backup time and storage usage, but their trade-offs in recovery complexity mean they require careful management to ensure all pieces are accounted for when restoring your data. If incremental backups are all about maximizing efficiency, synthetic backups take things a step further by combining the best of full and incremental methods. Synthetic backups start with a full backup, just like any other method. However, instead of relying solely on incremental backups for changes, synthetic backups merge the data from incremental backups into a single, 
fully restorable backup file. Think of it this way, rather than manually piecing together all the changes from incremental backups during recovery, the synthetic backup does that work for you ahead of time. It essentially creates a new, up-to-date full backup without the need to recopy all your data. This process happens automatically during the backup routine, reducing the strain on your network and saving you from a tedious recovery process. The major advantage of synthetic backups is how they simplify recovery. Like a full backup, everything you need is in one place, making the restore process fast and straightforward. However, because synthetic backups use incremental backups to build new full backups, they significantly reduce the time and resources needed to create them compared to starting from scratch. Synthetic backups are particularly useful in environments where minimizing network impact is critical, such as in businesses with large amounts of data or limited bandwidth. However, they require advanced backup software and careful setup, making them better suited for organizations or individuals with more demanding backup needs. Creating backups is an essential step in protecting your data, but having a backup isn't enough. You need to make sure that your backups will actually work when you need them most. This is where backup testing comes into play. Think of it as giving your safety net a practice run before you rely on it during a real fall. Backup testing is the process of verifying that your backups are complete, accessible, and restorable. Without regular testing, you could be left with a false sense of security. Imagine going to restore your data only to discover that a critical backup was corrupted, incomplete, or improperly configured. What a nightmare that would be. So, how often should you test your backups? The frequency of backup testing depends on how often your data changes and how critical it is to your operations. For personal data or small-scale backups, testing once a month might suffice. In professional environments, especially where data is critical, testing should happen more frequently. The goal is to ensure that your backup process is functioning correctly and your recovery plan can be executed smoothly. Once you've decided how to backup your data, the next question is where to store it. On-site backups, stored locally, offer speed and convenience. Restoring from a local source is typically faster, and you have direct oversight of the backup process and data. However, on-site backups are vulnerable to physical damage from unforeseen disasters like fires or floods and can also be targets for theft. Additionally, the limited capacity of physical storage devices can pose challenges as data grows. Off-site backups, such as cloud storage, address many of these vulnerabilities. Cloud backups provide accessibility from virtually anywhere with an internet connection, scalability to meet your changing storage needs, and protection against localized disasters. However, they come with their own challenges. A stable internet connection is essential, and there are ongoing subscription costs to consider. While cloud providers prioritize security, no system is entirely immune to breaches, making it critical to choose a trusted provider. For the best protection, many organizations use a hybrid approach, combining on-site backups for quick recovery and off-site backups to safeguard against catastrophic events. This strategy ensures data is both accessible and secure, no matter what challenges arise. After deciding where to store your backups, the next step is organizing those backups in a way that balances accessibility, redundancy, and storage management. This is where GFS, or the grandfather, father, son backup rotation, comes into play. GFS is a structured backup rotation scheme that organizes backups into three levels, labeled grandfather, father, and son. It works in tandem with full, differential, and incremental backups, providing a framework for when backups are created and for how long they are retained. In this hierarchy, son backups are created most frequently and capture changes from the most recent activity. These backups are replaced regularly to keep storage requirements manageable. Father backups are created less frequently and provide a broader snapshot of your data, retaining changes over a longer period. Finally, grandfather backups are created the least frequently and preserved for the longest duration, acting as an archive of your data over time. GFS ensures that you always have multiple recovery points at different intervals. If you need to recover something recent, a Sun backup will typically have the necessary data. For changes or files that are further in the past, a father or grandfather backup can step in. This tiered system reduces the risk of data loss, as older backups can serve as a fallback if a newer one is unavailable or corrupted. 
One of the main advantages of GFS is its ability to optimize storage space while maintaining sufficient redundancy. Instead of keeping every backup indefinitely, GFS prioritizes the most recent backups for quick access and retains higher-level backups less frequently for long-term protection. This makes it a versatile strategy suitable for both on-site and off-site storage solutions, offering a reliable safety net for your data no matter where it resides. To wrap things up, I will talk briefly about the 3 2 1 backup rule, which provides a simple yet highly effective guideline for structuring your overall backup strategy. This rule ensures your data remains secure by emphasizing redundancy, diversity, and geographic separation. According to the 3 2 1 rule, you should always have three copies of your data, the original and two backups. At least two of these copies should be stored on different types of media, such as an external hard drive and cloud storage to reduce the risk of simultaneous failure. Additionally, one of these backups should be stored off-site, ensuring your data is safe from local disasters like fires, floods, or theft. The beauty of the 3 2 one rule lies in its adaptability. For example, you could keep one copy on your computer, another on an external hard drive stored locally, and a third in the cloud. This approach helps protect your data from hardware failures, natural disasters, and even ransomware attacks, providing a comprehensive safety net that's both practical and effective. Now that you have learned about backup types, backup testing, backup locations, GFS, and the 3 2 1 rule, I want you to know this. It's not about picking just one method, it's about layering them together to create a fortress of redundancy and recovery options. That way you never have to experience the nightmare of losing critical data. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.